So this is higher, my revision paper two. Um, I'm going to share this PDF as well that I've written on and I've already typed in some answers and then I'm going to annotate things as I go. So first of all, some of the systems questions. The range of values that can be represented using 16-bit two's complement. So I know that I've got two to the power of 16 values to play with. Half of them are going to be negative, half are positive. So if I half that, and that works out at 32,768. That could be, I've got negative 32,768 to whatever. I could work it out with a different type of working. I could go 2 to the power of 15. Because if I have 2 to the power of 16, that's what I'll get anyway. 2 to the power of 15. So negative that to... 2 to the power of 15 minus 1. The reason I'm taking off 1 at the end is because 0 counts as a positive number. So that way I've got negative 32,768 to 32,767. Right, and that gives me my 65,000 and whatever values to play with, which is 2 to the power of 16. There's another video that's on that, um, and I'll give you notes on it as well. So, writing this number with floating point, really common three mark question, um, I've got the sine, the mentissa and the exponent and I've already written in the numbers. It says here there's 16 bits for the mentissa including the sine bit, well, what do we notice about this? There are 15 bits in here, because the sine is taking up one of them, so just be careful that you've got 15 digits. It's really helpful for you and for the person marking it, if you group them in fours as much as you can so a three and some fours makes it much easier to count especially if you get a lot of zeros my sign bit is because this is a negative number so that sign is because it's a negative number that's a one and how do I get my exponent well I need to put the point before the first one so I'm going one two three four five six so I'm going six places to the right. So first of all, I do six. Zero, 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 eight, four, two, one. Then I flip the bits because I'm doing this negative number, so it's two's complement. And then I add one. So I carry the one over. And that gives me my number. So that's negative 6 exponent in binary and that's nothing specifically to do with floating point that's a, a two's complement question 3 was about increasing the processor clock speed so it already says well increasing performance it already says that increasing clock speed is one way of doing it other things we could do we could increase the number of cores we could increase the width of the data bus Or we could increase the size of the cache. And then my explanation does to relate to whatever one I've chosen. So if I was doing this question personally, I would start with the part B. Which explanation can you remember? And then work backwards and that's the one that you write down. So if you can remember a great explanation for the data bus, then I would suggest that that's what you do. You write down your explanation and then go back and say, increase the width of the data bus. Um, I'm going to come back to the top part of that question 4, but I'm just going to do a systems question here. So, stored passwords secured using public and private keys. You notice this question doesn't actually say anything about encryption. Like, the question doesn't use the word encryption or decryption. The easiest answer that you can give here is that you say that the public key encrypts, the private key decrypts. It seems a very short answer, but you've covered both of the points there. Um, and this was in the 2023 uh, exam, or at least just the encryption part was. And then I'm going to go through some of the st sort of standalone, longer software development questions.